Hey guys, so I will go ahead and say it. I think Alpha Investments was right, and he actually has a video titled, You Opened a Magic the Gathering Store, Now You Regret It. So he has a he had a series of videos telling people not to become captivated with the concept of opening a magic store. Now, even though my finances are very good and they're very stable, and I own a business and it's a, I would say for a startup, relatively successful business, um, the workers and everyone they're very well compensated. Everyone is happy here. And the problem was I got a little bit arrogant. I said, you know what? I think the main reason that these magic stores fail is because they don't have the cash flow. They don't have the capital. I'm sitting on a bunch of capital. Let's see what will happen. I actually started my magic store in 2017, but it failed so epically that I just don't even really talk about those times because um, we had hired someone and you know we had to delete her from most of our social media, but I'm sure that there's some that still exist and she's no longer on this channel, but she was making videos on the channel and she was getting better at it. Uh, one of the things that I was very concerned about and later it turned out to be um, true was uh, the inventory. Some inventory goes missing. Some inventory is not accounted for. Um, when you're hiring someone, you do have to do a background check as I obviously know now. So back to 2017, we hired the wrong person and that was my explanation to why the store failed at that time. There was another explanation which was that um, when you talk about um, it was more than just hiring the wrong, wrong per person to operate it. It was also that we had the wrong distributor. We were paying way too much. We were paying uh, $3 a pack for the blister packs. I've always been a fan, fan of blister packs, but the margins are not as high as you can imagine a booster box. At $3 a pack, you're paying uh, 100, and, 100 plus, 108 per booster box worth of things, but I've always liked it because the majority of people living in my area, which I knew I wanted to open a store in, they're not gonna be able to drop $100 on a box, but they might be able to drop $4 or something like that on a pack or buy a few packs free, free for $10 is what we typically sold it for, but if we bought it in for $3, that's no good. So uh, moving forward to December of 2018, uh, actually, we started in November. I had found a new person, um, and that new person was, in my opinion, um, going to become better. Um, she is on. She was on my other channel, my uh, tygo dot. No, that's my website dot com. But my other channel, you can watch a few of her videos. She did make a few videos on this channel. Um, it didn't work because she didn't. She doesn't have like the salesy personality. Um, I think one of the, so logically speaking, the last thing that you guys want to hear is, um, and it's just absolutely okay of me, but it doesn't help sell packs when the first thing that you keep, that you keep mentioning is your boyfriend, this, your boyfriend, that your boyfriend, this obviously our core demographic is uh, single males. And that is, <laughs> I, I remember an article about this uh, Twitch streamer in Houston. I didn't know she was in Houston and people got really, really upset, wrongfully so I believe, but still you have to consider the reaction from people. And when they found out that she was not a single cosplayer, she was actually married to an Asian dude. And they got really upset, all the moderators laughed and it was a big deal because people thought that they, uh, she had said many times that she was single, but she wasn't, and you know she had um, portrayed herself as being available all the time, and she wasn't, and that was actually big news. I remember reading, I remember um, Jessica, my secretary slash content writer, telling me like, oh, you know, we should have done something similar to what she did, because look at all the money she was making. You know, um, probably a million dollars plus from this quote scam. I don't think it was a scam, but I just think it's good marketing. But she was not a marketer, so 
pretty much point blank. Um, she didn't know how to sell product. Um, and in fact, many times she would actually adversely sell product. Uh, and it would be like, okay, sales are down from doing no marketing. Something is not right. <laughs> I mean, when we did no marketing and we compared it to when she was marketing, actually our sales were higher when no marketing was being done. So anyway, Rudy um, has some interesting points and it is a one of his first videos series, if not like one of his only video series, was about opening a store. And he made several videos about that coming from his perspective. Um, I don't believe he has any employees. Um, I've never seen any of his employees. And he's never mentioned that he had any. And his store is just a physical location for you to... Um, sell him a collection so it's a meet up place which makes a lot of sense because that's what i do in my store is whenever i want to buy a collection i actually bought a really recent collection a really big recent collection just a bulk stuff um but a lot of the bulk stuff actually has been going up uh dictate of uh helios or dictate of our Ar erebos is like a eight dollar card i was like what is this and i do have uh quite a few of those right now that I don't know why I have so many, but I do. So back to the whole um, issue about opening a store, I think the marketing was not done correctly, and but our distribution price is now lower. So it's $2.25 for a, a pack, a blister pack of Magic Now, which for one month it was $2, but when you're trying to sell it for $3.33 to free for $10, that makes a difference. That's like a dollar margin, which is okay, as opposed to a 33 cents margin, which is not very good, um, especially after tax. And if you have to ship it, you're really not making any money on that at all. Now, the Planeswalker decks, we get them for $8.25. I actually found a somebody cheaper online. Online, uh, You can get Planeswalker decks for cheaper than $8, which is, uh, for me, fascinating. Uh, it is quite fascinating, but I've been able to reduce that price to seven fifty, which is around what um, the online price is. So at least he matches that. Pokemon's two twenty five a pack. Uh, it just makes it simple. Unless they're pins, the pin is an extra fifty cents. The EX card is an extra twenty five cents, and then so on and so forth. The tins are eight dollars, but the tin itself sometimes can sell for five dollars if it's an EV Lucin. It sells for more. Then if it's a Gyarados or Gengar, especially when Champ, I mean, Champ tin has no value, in my opinion. Uh, but the pins have value, the pins are high quality, and so on. My model was incorrect. So my model assumed that we could train a employee or a worker to do the online sales. So this worker, the reason that we were going to pay this worker $15 A, that's my minimal pay. I don't think I should pay anyone less than $15, and I'm very... We pay our interns $15, and they come and go as they please, so there's not that much responsibility. Um, we pay most of our other individuals 20 plus, and it, they didn't start at 20. Most of them started at 14 or 15, and they've just, you know, we have performance reviews every six months, which means that if they did a good job, which they obviously did because they're still at the company, they get a bump up a few dollars, and that accumulates. So after five years, then everyone's over $20, no matter where they kind of started. But I don't pay under 15. Um, in 2019 and on, I'm not going to pay under 15. I did calculations. $15 per hour on a 40-hour work week is the least amount of money that you can live off independently. Um, and that's what I want all my workers, worker bees to do. I don't want them to live at home. No offense to people li live at home, but I think that when you do have your own place, you have your own bills, you have your own, you know, you can come and go as you choose. That's what startup life is. Your hours, I remember uh, Amy when she first worked with us and she lived at home, uh, she had a curfew. And it's just like, hey, Amy, we need to get this done. It's like, you know, I don't care if it's 4 a.m. or not, but she had to go home. And I thought that was kind of inconvenient for the team building exercises and the, you know, development side because India, we work with India. Uh, we have India developers. We actually have 40 of them and they have a different time zone than we do. So we're always working middle of night. 
But uh, one of the uh, crazy things about opening a magic store is I don't think that you can pay an employee $15 an hour. I just cannot do the math. It doesn't pencil in unless that employee is also doing online sales and therefore they would be somewhat a digital marketer. Uh, it doesn't pencil in. You can't have someone sit there and wait for customers to come in. There's not enough customers. Now, one example I'll give you guys is Draft. I know a lot of you think that, oh, Draft pays a lot of money. Let me just give you the best example of Draft. So let's assume that you buy a box for $80. Uh, it's at around $78. They did up its price. But let's say you buy a box for $80 from a distributor of the new set. Um, if you were to buy a box online, I think the cheapest one of Ramnica Allegiance is about $90 uh, shipped to you. But let's say you buy for $80. You have 10 people sign up for Draft, which is a lot. Given 10 people and when, if I could get 10 people to sign up for draft, I would be elated. And those 10 people give you $10. So you give those 10 people free packs a piece. And because you opened a booster box, you kind of have to give the other remaining six packs. So free times 10 is 30. And then the six packs can be used as a prize pool. It's not a great prize pool, but first place gets four, second place gets two. So you made, they paid $100. You spent $80, I'm rounding, for the box. So, so theoretically, you made a $20 profit. But wait wait a second. If you open your store on Friday from 6 until 12, you pay an employee, we pay an employee $15 an hour. That's at least $90 with no W-2. So that's assuming that's a 1099 contract part-time employee which is the lowest employee. And I don't want anyone ever to be 1099 because I don't believe in that. I believe people should have health insurance. I believe people should have 401ks. I believe you have to show people, hey, work in my company for the next 20 years and you can retire. If you can't, if you can't show someone that, a path to that, then what's the point of them working there? They, they should be doing something else. And my personal opinion, which again is opinion, it's not, true for every boss so great you spend ninety dollars on the person being there you spend some money on rent you spend some money on electric you spend some money on cable you spend some money on internet you spend some money on water you spend some money on heating maybe air conditioning depending on the time of year and yeah so how did you make money again from this draft uh so you didn't now, you might say, oh, what about selling singles? The majority of singles that you sell are standard. There's something called a challenger deck, and that really, really is bad for, for when you're selling singles because to, buy, to sell singles, you have to buy singles. And if you sit on singles a long time, they will go down in price either because of rotation. Again, most of your singles, most of the inventory that comes into the store is going to be standard. That is true. I don't want people to think uh, that all, all, all we get is reserve list cards. Even if good reserve list cards come to our store, people want over TCG player for them. I mean, they do. I have emails and text messages after text messages. Maybe I'll make a video and I'll just play some like dramatic background music and you can see how ridiculous uh, people want for uh, how much they want to sell these cards to me for and they're just damaged or you know collector's editions with the corners cut off and they want uh, full retail for them card kingdom retail and it's just like email card kingdom see what they tell you and then they email back and i'm like hey see i told you there your cards are worthless card kingdom won't buy them from you so now you want to sell them to me for full retail come on now so the majority of cards you get are standard and the Challenger decks are a faux pas because essentially you can get them any Walmart. I think the Challenger decks right now are selling online for uh, $14 for really bad Challenger decks. And it's like, okay, that didn't even hold in price. Uh, the Challenger deck itself didn't hold in price. What do you think happened to the cards in the deck? I think the, um, the, uh, the vehicle one is selling for $13 on Dave and Adams now. And that had four Heart of Kinrin which was a very, very strong card at the time and very valuable for Mythics, right? And it's got like unclaimed ter territory and all these really great cards in it. I'm just like, okay, if the whole thing is $14, <laughs> what do you think happened to the price of the cards in the set? 
Uh, now, of course, rotation and blah, blah, blah. But imagine even the non-rotation elements of it. It would be very bad. So standard singles is not going to make you money, mainly because you lose so much money on the back end when rotation hits or a challenger deck hits. Or who knows what is going to happen. But basically, your cards, maybe a game day night or something, a new product comes along and it's a reprint of that giant dinosaur that you <laughs> bought a bunch of. Regisaurus, Alpha Regisaurus. I remember that happening. I was like, what? What is this product? And how come it had the, the Regi Alpha Um. Anyway, uh, the whole point of this is, okay, if Draft, if FNM, so FNM is very similar model because you have to pay them back in store credit, which you might make a little bit, but you're not going to make that much money. Um, and you, you just have too much overhead unless you're bringing in 150, 100 plus which I did talk to my friend who owned the store, DNA Comics, and when you have that many people, a lot of stuff goes missing um, at your store. Because those sometimes at pre-release, you have people coming in from different places, and that will be the only time you will ever see them. And then t-shirts will go missing, anime figures go missing, a lot of things go missing because there's just so much chaos and so many people and it's hard to keep track of everyone um, and typically speaking a lot of those people who come to these larger events uh, that would be the only time you will ever see them so even if you did caught, catch them on camera and put it on Facebook which he has done in the past it's unlikely anyone would be able to identify them and that will be that so you might be like oh well that's bad on them but it's also very bad for a store owner to have to face that uh, knowledge so you don't make money from selling. The only way that you make money is you sell in volume um, and you don't do that physically. You cannot sell in volume physically because you will inundate your area with packs and eventually they don't want any of the old packs. And you will sit on dragons of uh, Dragon Maze, dragons of Tarkir. You sit on these old boxes forever and you're just like, uh what happened <laughs> what happened you know and what happened was you got screwed i mean you, you got it's kind of like that game right where you have to race around and you have to sit in a chair you're the one who doesn't have a chair right which the coast is always going to make their money the distributor will always make their money because you pay them in cash and the only person who's not going to make their money is y'all so um, back to the Rudy videos, I think it would have been good for me to actually have talked to him. I've never talked to Rudy before. Um, I think before opening my store, I should have called Rudy, seen if he, he may have picked up the phone, maybe he wanted to have, who knows, and discussed the economics of his store in more detail because my store, I didn't understand the employee aspect of it as well as I should have. I assumed that the employee would be uh, you know, selling a ton of cards online and they would just physically, you know, I assume that their their job would be to sit there, uh, wait for customers to come in. And then when they're not working, or when customers are not coming in, they will be able to sell cards online. But I think that is too much to ask for a Magic Store employee. And even though we offered training, we offered incentives, it didn't work out for me personally that I could not find someone like this and therefore my whole model falls apart because we physically based on our location, based on stolen merchandise, lost insurance, overhead, rent, um, all this stuff, we literally cannot make enough money to support one employee. Um, we, to stem the bleeding, we had to get rid of that worker um, and luckily, you know, she had a better job. She actually, you know, is off to a better place now because I would never want to keep someone. And I, we did give her the option to stay. We gave, I gave her the option to stay, to move on to digital marketing team. And that was an option that she was thinking about, but eventually she resigned and she wrote a interesting email, which I'm not going to detail, but overall it was a good experience. I had a good time. I thought that it really could work um, with the right person. And now I know that even if you pick the right person, it will not work. So 2017, uh, December 2017, I, I thought it was A, the distributor was charging too much, and B, the uh, worker was not correct. 
Um, now, fast forward a year later, um, we have the correct distributor and we had the correct worker, but it still didn't work out because the margins are non-existent. Um, you're sitting on lots and lots of inventory for long periods of time, um, and your margins on that inventory decrease as time passes. So we're not talking about Urza Saga, where if I sat in my inventory, one day it might be valuable. Uh, we're talking about Core 2019, uh, Afer Revolt. Um, Afer Revolt actually isn't bad. That's probably one of the better things to be sitting on at this time. But Amor Kent and Hour of Devastation, just terrible stuff. So uh, back to my point, I think having a conversation with Rudy about the economics of his store, not just the videos that he portrayed his store as, but the actual economics of his store would have been helpful for me. Uh, would I paid for that? Yeah. Knowing what I do know right now, I think that I would have paid him whatever his consulting fee would be. I'm sure that there is some fee. Um, and just to have an honest discussion on the store because it would have saved me uh, quite a bit of money. And it's not that I don't think a store can work. I think the store model has to be very similar to Rudy's. Now, please subscribe to my digital marketing channel because I have been left off the top 100 social media influencers again, which doesn't make any sense. So it's the top 100 Houston social media uh, and I have been left off this list because they don't like me very much. The people who make the list, they're number one and two. So imagine that, right? The people making a list, instead of reclusing themselves from the list, they have ranked themselves one and two. And I have not been put on the list at all for many years since I started marketing in 2015. They have left me off the list every single year. I have the biggest LinkedIn profile of them. I have the highest engagement. And now I want the biggest YouTube channel because YouTube is something that I want to do. And I really need your help because I would really like to uh, rub it in their face. Bye. Please subscribe to my other channel. It's okay if you don't subscribe to this one. As long as you subscribe to the other channel. Bye, guys.